kindness, O Lord, be bountiful with thine. May the walls of Jerusalem be restored. Then will you delight in proper oblation, in sacrifice and open offerings. Then shall they offer calves upon your altar, and have mercy on me, O God. Lord, stop by three days, O Oh. 
Γέννητο κύριε το ελαιό σου εφημά, αγαλιάστε δίκαιη εν κυρίω. Προφία. Προσκολληθείου σου πρώτη επιστολή πάμε του ανάγνωσμα. Πρόσκολο. Αδελφοί, πάντα μη έξιστη, αλλά ο πάντα συμφέρει. Πάντα μη έξιστη, αλλά ούτε εγώ εξουσιαστή στο με υποτίθο. Τα πρόγραμμα τη κυρία και η κυρία τη βρώμαση. Ο δε θεό και τα αυτή και τα αυτά καταργήσει. Το δε σώμα που την πορνεία, αλλά το κυρίω. Και ο κυρίω το σώμα τη. Ο δε θεό και τον κύριο ήγηρε. Και η μάση ξεγερεί δια τη δυνάμεω αυτού. Ούτε είδατε ότι τα σώματα ημών μέλη τη του εστί. Άρα σκούν τα μέλη του Ιησού, ή ίσο πόρνη μέλη, μη γέννητο. Ή ούτε είδατε ότι ο κολόμενο τη πόρνη εν σώμα εστί. Έσω τη γάρτηση, η δύο εισάκα μία. Ο δε κολόμενο το κυρίω εν πνεύμα τη εστί. Φέρνει την πορνεία. Πάνω μάρτημα, ο εάν ποιήσει άνθρωπο εκ του σώματο εστί. Ο δε πορνεύονη στο ιδίω σώμα μαρτάνει. Ή ούτε είδατε ότι το σώμα ημών ναό του ενημείου του Αγίου Πνεύματο εστί, που έχετε από Θεού και ούτε στέει αυτό. Η γορίστα τε γάρτιμη, δοξάσατε δει το Θεό εν το σώμα τη ημών και εν το πνεύμα τη ημών, άτινα εστί του Θεού. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. The reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brethren, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I therefore make the members of Christ and make them of members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who joins himself to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two shall become one flesh. But he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun immorality, every other sin which a man commits is outside his body. But the immoral sin, man sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to God. Peace be unto you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sophie, or Thea, push me to a new evangelium. Rene, Palashi, and all the manis. Let's look at the book of the man you can see from now. Εγώ δε 
who sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have fed on the pods that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and make merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to make merry. Now his oldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what this meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Lo, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, you killed for him the fat of calf. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive and lost and was lost and now is found.
have the children come up. I see we have them in here already, which is good. Well, today, uh, again, we're getting so close to, uh, to Lent uh, that I want to talk about uh, this, uh, this idea of, I know many of you go to school, you have friends, and uh, why do our Catholic and Protestant uh, friends uh, have Easter at a different time? Uh, we have, uh, uh, we are going to celebrate Easter on, on May, uh, May 5th, and, uh, and the Roman Church and Protestant churches are going to celebrate this month. At the end of this month, on March, 20, on March 31st, and then there's a, a five-week difference between Easter. Why is that? We're all Christians. Why, why is the date different? And many people ask that. Now, uh, explain why it's, it's, uh, why it's different. First of all, because uh, it, it goes right back to the beginning. We celebrated Easter uh, from, the, from the, when Christ was uh, crucified on the cross. The church has always celebrated Easter. But the first 300 years of Christianity, uh, uh, Christians were not supposed to go out and have churches, and we were not together. There were no phones, communications. Uh, was not the same. So, uh, so Easter was celebrated in different parts of the, of the world at different times. And, uh, and then finally, about the fourth century, uh, 325, around that time, uh, the, uh, uh, the church uh, was finally, uh, uh, was finally uh, illegal, so to speak, and it was not being persecuted. And they were able to gather together and determine different things about the faith, because there were a lot of things that were coming up about the faith. And Easter was one of them. What, how should we celebrate? We should celebrate all together on the same day. Why is it all uh, around the world different times? So it developed, uh, it had, first of all, it developed, uh, it's called the Ecumenical Council. The whole church got together. Uh, there were like uh, 316 uh, bishops. They all got together and they began to uh, to determine why when should we have Easter. And they determined. They said, "Well, it has to be in springtime. It has to be in springtime because that's when they knew that Christ uh, died uh, in the springtime. It has to be. Uh, it has to be uh, on a Sunday. It has to be after the Passover." And there were other things, it has to be before the, 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 the full moon uh, of the first uh, Sunday uh, of, uh, after Easter, after uh, the equinox, after spring. And so these were formulas that we put in together, and the church divided, decided that. And when, when they did that, you could do it every single year. We have even now, we know when uh, 2030, 2060, uh, whatever it's going to be, we know the date of Easter. So the whole church was celebrating Easter at the same time. And then, what happened? After about uh, 1,300 years later, it was discovered, it was discovered that the world does not rotate around uh, around the sun. Or, uh, the, the world it rotates it, it, it's 365 days, not only 365 days, but 365 and a quarter days. That means that there, there's an extra day every year, which we call leap year. Every fourth year, we celebrate what we call leap year. We put an extra day in February. February 29th. And so, the, so, so, the, so that was discovered, and it was discovered in the in the, in the West. It was Pope Gregory, I think it was, he was the Bishop of Rome, and uh, I don't know if they did it right away, but they adjusted all the days which affected Easter. It had it had an effect when they adjusted the days to 300 quarter. 365 and a quarter days, it, 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 it threw out this whole formula of Easter. But, they, but what happened was that they, again, uh, were not supposed to change the date for a reason that 
The way Easter was determined was by an ecumenical council. And the only way you can undo an ecumenical council is to have another ecumenical council. And that was not possible in the 13th, 14th century when they, when they discovered they had that extra one for the day. So, but Rome changed that, the, the dates, and that's why the whole formula changed. The whole formula changed. Today, uh, the March, March 21st is before, is before Passover. So it changed, it changed that dynamic of, of that formula. And the reason we don't change is because we can, because, because, because it was that Easter was determined by an ecumenical council. We have changed the dates of other days, like for instance, our church, the Orthodox Church, remained on the old calendar, which is called the Julian calendar, by the way. That was in the day of, of the Lord, and in those years, early years, and now we are going by the Gregorian counter, uh, uh, the, the Gregorian calendar. We now go by the Gregorian calendar, and that makes a difference in the day of Easter. And it goes back and forth. It goes back and forth. Uh, you know, it changes every year because you know, the, 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 full, the first the full moon of the, the, the season is not the same. That it all changes, and and, uh, and sometimes uh, sometimes there's uh, variations. So this year, uh, again, our Roman friends again celebrate March 21st, and we celebrate on the 5th. I think tomorrow. I think next year. Happens to be fall on the same day. We're all going to celebrate uh, the Roman Church and the Orthodox Churches are all going to celebrate on the same day. And then, and then after all that, all those years, it will be different days. So that's the reason why we have different days. Many people ask why do we celebrate for, uh, 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 Easter on a different day. By the way, the Church did not change the calendar for a long, long time, even in the 20th century. Uh, we used to celebrate Christmas, uh, you know, by the Julian calendar, of which now I have 14 or 15 days, I don't know how much it is this, uh, now, but there's a 14 day difference between the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar. But we, the church in the 20th century, decided we're going to change Christmas to go to the Gregorian calendar according to, uh, according to the, you know, the, the, the the solar system uh, 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 evolves, but the only day again we do not change is Easter, Pascha, and that's the reason. So, did you get all of that, children? <laughs> anyway, it's just to explain again the, the difference and why the difference is because the, the days were were formulated under the Julian calendar, under the First Ecumenical Council, and, to, and that has changed to the Gregorian calendar, which is today. To may God bless you.
creation master the deity, and cleanse me by your compassion, grant me the home land for which I long, and once again may be a citizen of paradise. The threefold radiance of the one God, let us pray, and let us shout in song, Holy are you, eternal Father, co-eternal Son, and divine Spirit, illumine us who worship you in faith, and deliver us from the eternal fire. Now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. Rejoice, gracious lady, who for the salvation of all gave birth to God in the flesh, and through whom the human race is found salvation, through you, pure and blessed Theotokos, may we find paradise.
For you are the resurrection of life, and repose and the part of service to be true and for that you know, to be stand for us. And to you we give glory, and to the earth to you, with your eternal Father, your holy life, and spirit, now and ever, and unto the age of the day. Things being said and done, and 
and the church uh, always struggled with that. As a matter of fact, it struggles with it now. Uh, you have uh, Arians, Arians meaning that they don't believe that Jesus is actually, actually the, son of, the Son of God, but not of the Holy Trinity. You have the Jehovah Witnesses, you have the Mayo, and the, the, uh, uh, those who are in Utah, the Masons, and, and not the Masons, uh, I forget, Mormons. Mormons, we got it, Mormons. So we have uh, those who, who really don't believe that uh, Jesus is the Son of God. And that's a, that's a problem. It's a problem uh, for them, not us. We know the truth and we can able to do it. But uh, if what it does is go to influence the other people and take them away from the truth of Christ, and, uh, but there's only one way to know Christ, and that's by the truth. That's by truth. Anyway, uh, when, uh, when, the, uh, when Martin Luther broke off from the uh, Roman Church, uh, he, he splintered from the Roman Church, and then there were many other splinters. And there was one uh, splinter, his uh, name was Calvin, and he began to preach uh, what, what, uh, what is a heresy, which is predestination. Predestination, what is predestination? Predestination is the thought that no matter who you are, what you do, you are already predestined. Your fate is already determined. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, it's already done and set. And we say, really, if that's the case. Well, here we have the, the gospel reading. We have the gospel reading where it says that, that uh, and this is uh, the father has two sons, and uh, the father is, is God. And the two sons are the people, and the, and the two sons says, you know what? We have, uh, we want to do what we want. He says, give us our inheritance. In other words, we talk about talents, that God gave us all certain talents, some less, some more. The more you have, the more responsible you are. If you think you're pretty good and hot shot and you can do this and you can do that, you've got a greater uh, responsibility to the Lord on how you pay that back to the Lord. How you pay that back to the Lord? And yet we have this uh, this one son that says he, he gets the father's inheritance, and he goes and he says and, and he squanders it. He goes and he leaves the father. Uh, he's out in the country, he's drinking himself, uh, you know, every night and all this kind of thing. He's doing the things that he shouldn't be doing, and uh, finally he finds himself in a place of, of uh, poverty. He's in poverty. And he did what the, it says here. I had, I, I had the only way to survive was to find some kind of a job. And in, in those days, uh, what they had cattle and sheep. And he said, "Well, they went to the pigs, and they were, and they told him, you know, take care of the pigs." And he said, "Even if I had the, the pods from the, what the pigs eat, I, he said I was starving. He was starving." I finally came to the point, and he said, "I have." He said, "What am I doing?" He said, "What am I doing? I'm killing myself." I'll go back to my father. I won't tell him that I'm his son. I'll tell him, be a slave, just like my father. Because the slaves have more than I have even here with the pigs. Even my father's slaves have more. And he comes back, and the beautiful part of it is, the father, it says, it, 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 it gives an image of the father is there waiting for the son. And the son, he sees the son, and he runs out to the son. And Satan comes and talks him. And he embraces him. And he, and, and, he, and he said, my son, my son. And the son is trying to make it. Well, you know, I did all this. I, I, I sinned against you. And uh, he's, he's asking forgiveness. And the father now listens to that. You came back to me. And he says, uh, give him his, uh, the, the clothes that he used to wear. Give him the shoes that he should have. All these things. And we're going to have killed the fatted calf. And we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to have uh, this uh, real feast. Because I have a son that was lost, and now he is found. If there's such a thing as predestination, would God send us down here, and no matter what we do or say, would he go and put himself on a cross if we're already determined? If our, if our fate is already determined, like uh, half of us are going to go to heaven, half of us are going to go to hell. No. God didn't come down because there was a, a you already predestined. He gave us life because he is life. He is love. We are to be loved. And love is freedom. 
We are free when we love. When we love somebody, there's a freedom. A love, the way we call love today is uh, just a farce sometimes. Oh, they're making love and things like that. And, uh, and, uh, or somebody's abusive, uh, they're, they're married, and uh, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And you've got to, that's not love. That's possession. But God gave us freedom, that honor, that honor that we can do whatever we want to do. Why? Because if we go to heaven, he only wants us to love him. We are created for that love, to be with him. He's our father. He's our creator. And that's why there's no such thing as predestination of what people still say today. Predestination. There was a Roman saint, Augustine. He started, he was preaching. And this goes back to the, the fourth century. And he began to preach what sounded like predestination. But what he was really talking about, that's all corrected by the Roman church. Well, it's corrected by the Roman church. They don't believe Augustine because he's a saint of our church as well, but he's from the East. And he, uh, and he was, his predestination idea was that God knows who, what we're going, what's, who we're going to do. God already now knows. We can't hide anything from God. He knows who's going to heaven and he knows who's going to hell. So he knows that, so, but that doesn't mean our destination is because God knows it, that we are already predestined to that. No, God knows it, but still, in his uh, merciful way, gives us this uh, honor of free will. You can do what you want. That's why people that don't come to church and they do this and they do that and all that kind of, you're free. We'll try, try to bring you in and all that kind of thing, or at least pray, Lord, Lord. Bring your children, you know, don't neglect your children, don't do all, all these things that we do, many of us do. That's free will. God doesn't come down and, and smash them. No, you have a will to do that, but we pay for that. Whoever we are, we pay for. Whether it's through uh, grace, that we enter the kingdom of heaven, even through our sins, even through our faults, even through all these other things, as long as we love God and we ask for forgiveness to the Lord, we are to be in his kingdom forever and forever because we're human beings in our free will. We do things that are not perfect, obviously. And he gives us, again, this gift of free will. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Of course, there's a penalty. The, the laws, the, the laws of the state, the government, and the world. There's certain laws that we have. You can't get away with it uh, uh, physically, uh, but uh, uh, even spiritually, you can do what you want. But again, you are not forced to do it. God does not force us. He gives us a few nudges here and there. You know that. He assigns us an angel that guides us from here to there. Gives us a conscience. Our conscience is a natural sense that we have that God has given us to know what's right and what's wrong. He has given us, he has given us all these tools for us to make that choice. And the choice is to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. To the best of your ability, to whatever talents you have. And the son comes back, and the father, because the son comes back after his sins, comes back on his own. If he didn't come back, he would have been doomed. If he didn't come back, he would have been doomed. But he came back, and the father is there waiting for every single one of us. And the people who are outside. Who knows? Who knows? That, uh, whoever is out there, and they don't find uh, the Lord as they ought to. Only God knows. Nobody knows who's. Who's gonna, we don't know who's going to go to heaven. Well, we have a pretty good idea when we, when we have the saints, but they live a certain kind of life. But we know we have ideas of who's going to heaven and who's going to hell. But only God knows that as well. So this, this, uh, this here, the, the, what we call the prodigal son, the one who went and uh, dispersed all his, uh, his uh, inheritance and gave it away, uh, found himself uh, in, a, in, a, in a very dreadful state and said, I will come back to my father. 
and I will ask him to forgive me. And the father is there with open arms and welcoming him and honoring him because he came back and he will live forever in the arms of his father. Amen. I love this. Thank you. 